Reading with your kids. Hola, Niha, Konnichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Moni Moliwanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so very delighted and so very honored that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, Himalaya, Ghana, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Louise Chadbourne. She is here to celebrate Granite, the full Mastiff story. Before we invite Louise into the studio, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by I Told You So, the great series by our friend Mark Gunning. What do you get when you put William and Thomas together? A boatload of adventure, that's what. Just when the neighbors thought it was safe to head outside, William has other plans. William and Thomas are 10-year-old boys that know how to have fun. From outrageous stunts to spectacular pranks, the boys will keep you guessing. Will anyone be safe? This is a really fun series of four books by our friend Mark Gunning that not only celebrate the, 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 the joys of having fun, but also teach some really great lessons, some great old school lessons. You want to check it out today. I Told You So, the great series by our friend Mark Gunning. Joining us right now from Webster in the beautiful state of Massachusetts, our guest today is the author of a great new picture book. It's called Granite, the Bull Mastiff Story. Please welcome to the show, Louise Chadbourne. Hey, Louise, how are you? Hey, good morning. I am fantastic, and I can't thank you enough to be talking to you. I, I'm like, wow, pinch me. Am I dreaming? <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> really, Jed. And I'm not just saying that. <laughs> well, we have to do something so that you have better dreams than this. But anyways, it's, <laughs> it's great to be talking to a, a fellow Massachusetts, na Massachusetts na native. And I'm really excited to talk about granite because bull massives, they're one of those dog breeds <laughs> that are so massive and regal and intimidating sometimes but also they, they can be really sweet too they can be and you know that's one of the main reasons i decided to write the book about good old granite the bull mastiff because a lot of the breeds as you know jed they get somewhat of a bad rap at times mm -hmm. and i'm like no we have to show all his fun loving adventures and who doesn't like a lap dog from a puppy eight pounds to 165 pounds? Come on. <laughs> we all do, right? <laughs> well, that's one of it, it. You're right about there are certain breeds that have a reputation. Yeah. And massives fall into that. Pit bulls, uh, Dobermans, yeah. German shepherds. The reality is that you know those those dogs absolutely can uh if if they're not trained properly or if they're trained to hurt people they can hurt people and they're very very powerful but it's more in the way that they're trained every dog is capable of hurting people I, you know right. i we i grew up with st bernards and my st bernard it. was over 200 pounds and he was massive yeah. and he was strong and right. he could hurt you if um, if if given cause, but no one was right. ever afraid of him because he was this big, fluffy, drooling cartoon. <laughs> right, right. Same thing with Granite. However, there is a part in the book where it does talk about, you know, people looking and, you know, oh, my God, look at this head. The head on him was like, I, I can't even put it into words. Imagine like, Four heads put into one. Mm -hmm. um, you can't even put your hands around him, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and Granite does talk about that in the book, how, you know, people look at him, you know, as if he's a bit scary. And he looks at people as being a bit scary to him, too. And, you know, and how 
how you approach them, you know, mm -hmm. and what to do and that it's okay. Yes, they can look intimidating. However, again, if you know what you're doing, then it's okay. So let's talk about that. A lot of, of uh, people, when they, I, th I think people have kind of two reactions to dogs. Either if, if they're a dog person, it's, hey, a dog, and they'll, you know, they might <laughs> squat down and put their face right into the dog's, right. uh, you know, the strange dog's face or stick their hand out. Uh, whereas other people, if they're not dog people, they, they keep their distance. I have right. a feeling the right way to approach Granite and any dog is somewhere in the middle. Yes. Tell us yes. about that, please. Well, first, you should check with the person before you even attempt to, you know, go into any type of their space. Mm -hmm. Like people, too, you know, you don't go right smack up to them. You stop, you ask. And if you are a bit um, frightened for whatever reason, maybe in your childhood you didn't have a great experience, mm -hmm. then perhaps, you know, you shouldn't really want to go up to the dog because dogs can pick up on that as well. Mm -hmm. Not that they mean anything negative by it. However, you know, it does happen. And then you, you check with the person holding the dog and, you know, see if it's okay. And then they'll tell you and work with you on that. And a lot of people, children, whomever, they like to like put their hand right out and like go on top of their head. Mm -hmm. That's not always the best thing to do. Actually, I would say, not to really do that, you mm -hmm. know, you can like do a little bump fist gently, slowly down, you know, in front of the dog and let the dog smell you and then, you know, talk gently to the dog, you know, and, and really pay attention to whoever is handling that dog because a lot of them, as you know, and other folks, they, they've gone through some really bad childhoods, you know, like, like children and, they take some work and you can't expect them to like everyone. Mm -hmm. We don't like everyone and it's okay. <laughs> or I should say me, I won't throw you into that, Jed. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us how did Granite come into your life? Well, I bought a home uh, 24 years ago. Very important here. 24 years ago, I bought a home and Hey, you need a dog with a new home. So I did my <laughs> research and I watched um, some folks probably uh, remember Turner and Hooch. He had, you know, a great little dog there. And I started to do my research. That, I feel, is very important. You know, you need to match, you know, the puppy or any animal with your family and, you know, what time you can give it and care and, and money. Money is part of that, too. So back to Granite. I um, did the research. I had located someone right in Chapachet, Rhode Island, right over the line, and gave them a call. And they're like, we have eight babies. And if you want one, you need to pretty much say yes now. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, okay. They're, they're, they're that fast. Yes. Um, and so I agreed to um, pick out one. And it happened to be my little eight pound puppy. And I brought him home after we were allowed to, you know, bring them home because you, you know, you can't just take a puppy mm -hmm. from its mom. Mm -hmm. And the book talks about that, that, you know, he had to get a bit older and he had to socialize. And then when he was eight weeks old, we um, brought him home to, to Dudley, Massachusetts. And then Granite, Granite was a good boy. He really was. And there are many, many different you know, aspects of his story throughout the book. Then what happened is he reached nine, which is really, really a great age for a large breed dog. And then after that, sadly, he ended up passing away. And then I had all these memories and all this sadness because animals, I don't even like to call them animals. They're family members. They very much are with us. And I felt completely devastated. So I wrote everything down. And now fast forward 24 years later, I decided to pull out all that handwritten, handwritten back in the day, Jed, mm -hmm. no computer. <laughs> and I ended up pulling it out. And I had met a fellow children's author who said she had just uh, taken on becoming a publisher herself. And I pointed my finger and I said, hey. I've got a book for you. And then I laughed 
she laughed and I said, yeah, you probably hear that like, you know, a billion times a day. And she's like, get it over to me. I had to figure out now how to get it all onto the computer, Jed. Mm -hmm. No easy task. Um, And then three days later, she's like, you've got a book. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, dreams really do come true. So there you have it. Anyone can do this. (laughs) That's wonderful. Wonderful. You know, it'd be really nice if you could just take all those old notebooks and just put them on top of the computer. And then it's like it's on the computer. (laughs) I, I would love that, Jeff. Please, <laughs> please invent that, please. <laughs> One of the things that you said that, that I think is really important, um, and there are a lot of families with with young kids who are thinking, oh, you know, we should we should have a pet, we should have a dog. You mentioned doing research. That is so very very important when you're choosing to bring any type of animal into your home. I think because. Uh, you, there, there are some things that we assume and we assume we know uh, about animals. And I grew up with dogs all the time, but every single breed of dog that we've had is different. And in uh, my current family with, with my, my kids and my beautiful wife, we've had two dogs. And uh, one was a Border Collie that nice. you know we really didn't know anything about Border Collies. And we didn't understand that a, a Border Collie is basically a uh, – a, a dog with ADHD and <laughs> unlimited I like how you worded that. <laughs> unlimited energy. <laughs> right, that's what I was thinking immediately. Run, 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 run. <laughs> and you know, thankfully, we have a, 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 a big piece of property that he could go and run for hours nice. and hours and hours on. <laughs> and after he passed, but we adopted uh, from a shelter a, a beagle. And oh, talk about it. You talk. Tell me. About it. <laughs> So that's really important, um, right? Because you know, if you're living in the city, maybe a beagle is a great idea, but a border collie in an apartment building, probably not. Correct. I I, I agree with that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So and in the book, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, Jed. No, go ahead. Uh, what 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 other kind of of uh, things did you learn from having granite in your family? Oh, well, if you don't like drool, I probably would not get a full <laughs> um, I, I will share this with you, even though I know some people are going to be like, oh, my gosh, really? Did she really do that? I really did. I loved the drool, you know, flapping off the jowls. There's a great picture. The illustrator did a very nice job in, in the book. And, you know, there are puddles and my walls from... <laughs> Oh, maybe four feet down in the home. Yes, they were covered with, you know what, uh-huh. <laughs> granite drool. <laughs> um, even though at times I would try to wipe it and everything. Then I said, you know what, when children, you know, mock up the walls with color crayons or you're mocking off the height that they are, I looked at that as that's granite's legacy <laughs> in the home. So eventually I left it. Yes, I did, people. You heard me correctly. <laughs> oh, a drool growth chart. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, I kid you not. <laughs> um, and poop. Do we want to talk about poop? I, Children love poop. <laughs> they do indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, granite you know, ended up being 165 pounds, and he was like a miniature horse, cow, you know, whatever you want to compare him to. Um, And yes, I would have to have a wheelbarrow, you know, with Mm -hmm. the poop scooper, you know, doing it constantly. And in the back of the book, too, I thought I'd put a few um, helpful hints and pet tips, you know, for the children and adults, too. Um, to, you know, check off if they wanted to, you know, on various things that you really should do when you have, you know, a family member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we, we both talked about, you know, the fact that we love having our dogs as, as part of our family and talked about doing research. A a lot of people might be listening to this and hearing, you know, about the, the drool growth chart (laughs) and the poop that's as big as a beagle and think it's not worth it. 
I, I why would I want to bring a dog into my home? Can you talk a, a little bit about some of the benefits of of having a dog as part of your family? Oh, having a dog, it if you have any type of like empty void or something missing or you just, you know, need that I shouldn't say need. Um unconditional love. I'll start there, you know, a a pet of any sort, you know, even including a 165 pound dog, you know, they, they love seeing you the moment, you know, they know that you're pulling in to the driveway, they're at the door, they love you, even though they may have, you know, and again, people may not appreciate this, they may chew on your pillow or something, you know, they still love you. And, you know, they need to play, they need to interact. Um, the bull mastiff breed is a working dog. So if you can, you know, get that, know what that breed is, and what they need to do to keep their own brains occupied, you know, that helps like with granite, he also raked my yard, I did not prompt him. He picked up the rake one day and was raking the leaves in the backyard. And there's a picture, a real life <laughs> picture of it in the back of the book. Um, so, you know, what better help than have a dog who, you know, doesn't talk back, who mm -hmm. likes to do something. Sometimes your own children are like, I'm not going to go rake. Well, granite would rake. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, the big kisses. Where can you get big kisses like that, you know? And then on the bed, yeah, you might get a little bumped, you know, here and there being on the bed, but they love to sleep with you, you know. Um, you just feel all that love all the time. Yeah. What are some of the benefits that a kid can uh, uh, gain from being a, uh, from having a pet in the family? Oh, wow. Um, I used to work with some special needs folks, and just to see... You know, some I'm going to get emotional here, where some of the children, you know, may not be able to interact or know how to say or do different things with people. Um, you put an animal there, whether it be a cat, dog, a parrot, a horse. There's so much type of um, various pet therapies, and you see children just, like, smile maybe for the first time or, you know, actually... I'm getting worked up. You're getting me worked up here, Jed, <laughs> um, emotionally. Just see them come out of whatever inner inner thing that they may be struggling with, and to see that light up a room, that is spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I've uh, done in my educational magic shows is is I have a routine where I hand – kids some green beads and we're going to do something magical with them in a minute but first i'd like you to hold on to it and and think about something that you're grateful for and i love that so many times kids who are grateful for having their pet they're grateful for their pet, their dog or their cat in one case it was a skunk love it <laughs> <laughs> love it that skunk love but it. you know it's it's one of those things where having a pet is a great way especially for a young kid is a great way to learn how to love something other than yourself because right. kids can be so they come into the world. We all come into the world really self-centered and it's me, me, me. And an right. animal is a really uh, wonderful way to start thinking mm -hmm. about another living being and having that person depend on you and, and discovering that it's really neat when yeah. someone depends on you and you care for somebody else. Yes, and to teach them, you know, various skills, too, mm -hmm. you know, how to comb, how to groom, how to, you know, maybe talk and interact and, you know, and get that positive reinforcement quickly, you know. Mm -hmm. It's so gratifying um, for children. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you, you shared with us that, you know, Granite was a big part of your life, but he passed away. Yes. A family hearing that might think, man, I don't want my kids to have to deal with the loss of a dearly beloved pet. What would you what would you say to, to, to that family? I would say to that family, I like a term that I use, which is called heart moments, mm. where you take all the beautiful, fond memories, good memories, laughter, 
and you remember them all and you actually, you know, reach up to where your heart is and, you know, call it a heart moment. That way, when you're not having such a good day, then you can remember and recall those. Also, what I've done in the past is, you know, drawn pictures. I've done the writing. I think it's very important for children to talk and write mm-hmm. down their feelings, not to keep anything in. Even if, you know, maybe an adult is like, oh, just get over it. You know, mm-hmm. they quickly dismiss things. Then Um, do that. And then if you're able to later in life, perhaps plant a flower or a tree, anything like that. Wonderful. Well, and in your case, after you said goodbye to Granite and it's been some time now, have you welcomed another furry member of your family? Oh, I did when I felt right. And again, it's all about how you're feeling, you know, Um, and don't get me wrong. It feels like you know, 24 years ago was just yesterday. However, I did, um, I love the bull mastiff breed. So yes, I had a few more (laughs) bull mastiffs. And then my last dog was a Neapolitan mastiff. Um, And now I don't have any dogs. However, I have, what do I have? I have panther chameleon, lovebird, three cats, South African aquatic frog, and a Siamese fighting fish. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds like you have Louise's Ark. I do. And, oh, you triggered my memory, Jed. And I also volunteer over at Southwick Zoo. <laughs> Which is a magnificent zoo. It is. And they've made a lot of changes. It, it's I, I love it there. I can actually go there and talk to all the animals and people don't look at me like I'm a little <laughs> off, which is beautiful. <laughs> and I get to interact with the children and I love it. Love it. <laughs> well, speaking of interacting, I know people would love to interact with you, find out more about Granite and also find out more about Louise Chadbourne. Are there places online where people can connect with you? Yes, actually on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, author Louise Chadbourne. I also am on Instagram. My book is, um, you can either get it through me, Book Lovers Gourmet, which is in Webster, Massachusetts, good old Amazon. Um, And I'm trying to think where else. There are a few more places that are going, going to start to carry it. Wonderful. And you can always go to your local independent bookstore and ask for Granite, the Bull Mastiff by Louise Chadbourne, and they can make a call and order it, and it will be on their shelf in just a day or two. Love that. Thank you. (laughs) I always tend to forget something, so thank you, Jed. (laughs) We've had a great time speaking to the author of Granite, the Bull Mastiff story, and their author is Louise Chadbourne. Hey, Luis, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Jed, and thank you, everyone, and I appreciate all the time and support. And don't forget, dreams can come true. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guests will be two of our favorite authors in the world, Yobi Q and Kim Ann. They've they've teamed up together. They have a great project going on right now. They're writing two books for super busy moms and dads. It's quick affirmations for super busy women and quick affirmations for super busy men. That's the next episode of the podcast. Hey, if you're the author of a fantastic children's book, you just may be frustrated at how difficult it is to let the world know about your book. So many of the avenues that were traditionally open to authors just haven't been there for over two years. School visits, not available in most places. Library visits, the same. Book signings, they're happening, but on a very, very limited basis. We would love to help. There are so many ways that we can help you celebrate your book. You can be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's easy. It's fun. And it's absolutely free. And it gives you the chance to tell the world about your fantastic children's book. A great long-form conversation all about you and your book. 
You can also submit your book to our certified great read panel. If they believe that it's worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a certified great read. And with that status comes a number of really powerful tools to let folks know that your book is worthy of their consideration. You can also take advantage of our monthly promotion program. Check this out. We will celebrate your book through commercials on the podcast, messages to our 66,000 social media followers, and display your book on our nationwide network of digital pedestrian billboards. You can learn all about it by going to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click in the author's click here button at the top of the page and scroll on down to the various services. want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Let's start by thanking our guest, Louise Chadbourne. Please check out Granite the Bold Mastiff. Also want to thank our sponsor, Mark Gunning. Please be sure to check out his I Told You So series. A big thank you goes out to my team, Alejandro Dardy, Fatima Khan, Rory, Brady, Skyler, Strauss. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. I want to thank Augie the Doggy for having my back here in the studio. But most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.